ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಐಮ್ ಗೋನ್ ಗೋ ರೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ವರ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಂಪ್ಟಿ ನೇಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ which are the imagination of the five senses and an appearance in the pure supreme self should be understood to be the mysterious play of maya the mind which rises as if real from self sat chit beautiful verse what a beautiful So I still didn't get any comments with meaningful questions. So I'm going to make some up. The question that always comes up or that should come up really is how you're talking all of these $10 words psychology terms and stuff about what goes on in the mind quoting the buddha huh? <laughs> and running down all this psychological programming and stuff that's going on in our minds yeah and you're saying we should change the root thought from i am the body to i am brahman how how do you do it practically or how does it feel what is the experience like some you know questions like that are, those are useful they're, they're basic they're elementary but that's all right we're on such a high level at this point that even elementary questions are far advanced and very important so okay it starts out when you're a kid when you're a kid you're basically an animal you're a little drunk sociopath running around creating havoc and increasing entropy everywhere you go and then if you survive <laughs> you grow up which in western society most society means to crystallize to stop learning to stop growing up means finished huh into a position state or condition of fullness or completion grow up right so if you grow up that means you're done huh? like the brownies in the oven <laughs> baked to a crisp <laughs> and you can't change anymore or change is very difficult and painful so <clears throat> that describes pashu the animalistic human being going through life just trying to gratify their senses as much as possible not really uh, aware of any impact that they're having on others uh, just just a, a now a grown up sociopath look out not considering a, their impact on society or the other people in their lives or the earth or environment or anything so if such a one is lucky he gets enough suffering due to his terrible activities that he is forced to question why am i here who am i really what is this life what is it all about this is if he's fortunate if he's intelligent if he's stupid he'll just go on doing the same old nonsense so at at this point if one actually is sincere he advances to the next stage dwaita vada there is a god there is intelligence in control you can contact him through performance of rituals and earn merit for promotion to a better stage of life and so on uh, karma yoga and if you perfect karma yoga 
the rituals turn into love, spontaneous love, and it becomes bhakti. Now bhakti, when it matures, leads the worshiper, the bhakta, to conceive of or realize God within himself. So, okay, if God is within, uh, like Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is within you. All right. If it's within me, that means I'm something greater than that. I'm the context for God showing up. Oh, oh my God, what, <laughs> what could I be you know, like that? And one transcends the idea of God as an external absolute. And one begins to entertain the idea that one's self is the absolute. And this is the beginning of the Vivartavada. When bhakti is mature and one realizes identification with the deity, the next stage then is vivartavada. That's vishishta dvaita vada. Vishishta dvaita. Or dvaita dvaita. Or chintya bheda bheda tattva. So this stage then is transcended and becomes a new kind of sadhana, a different kind of actual meditation where one's meditation is not on anything exactly. But as I said in the last or two videos ago, it's about overhauling your mind and establishing a new point of view where you are Brahman. Now, if the word Brahman seems alien, and other and far away, okay? It's actually a very personal, direct and intimate process. And how does it go? Okay, so let's get, get off the theoretical platform now and talk about the experience. How is the experience? Well, okay, you have to read a lot of books and, and get to know a lot of terminology and establish certain categories of thought in your mind. And that takes some study and that takes some years, frankly. And then you get to the point where you can start thinking in the categories established by the Advaita literature. And Ramana, as we discussed many times, boils it down to four. The uh, Dvaita, Vishishta Dvaita, Vivarta, and Ajata at last, uh, the perfection. So Ramana Maharshi's teaching deals with Vivartavada and with an occasional dip down into uh, uh, Dvaita Dvaita or Vishishta Dvaita Vada. When somebody would come who was addicted to religious activities, Ramana would never discourage him. In fact, he would encourage and say, do more, do more. <laughs> Until the mind becomes completely fixed on one point. That is the, the uh, lotus feet of your deity. Padam, padam. The ultimate destination. So what happens when the mind becomes fixed is that uh, one becomes capable of entering samadhi <clears throat> lightly or deeply or a uh, short time or long time, depends on you. But uh, <clears throat> there is a, such a thing as momentary samadhi, momentary enlightenment and, and all that. Uh, that does exist, so you can look for that. But really what happens in the uh, Vivarta stage is that the mind is gradually cleared away. Uh, it's neti, 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 all the way. Uh, 
So how does it feel or how, what is the experience of it? Okay, you've seen my streaming videos here of uh, sitting meditation where I just literally sit down and do nothing, don't even move, hardly even breathe for like half an hour at a stretch. Yeah. Can you do that? The answer is yes, <laughs> you can. <laughs> you have to train yourself and it takes a long time, but you can do it. So what am I experiencing? When I first sit down, I center my mind on a thought or a sound, which for me are, are the same things. <laughs> thoughts are sounds, sounds are thoughts. And it could be Om, it could be Gayatri, it could be Ram, it could be Ramana, Arunachal, it could be Shiva, it could be all, anything, you know, whatever happens to strike my fancy at the moment, the Ganapati, Narasingha, uh, whatever, you know, wherever my heart is at the moment. And then I gradually drift into, uh, not a trance exactly, but a detached state where I'm not consciously accessing my senses. And then I begin to see the inner light, the light of Brahman, the light of consciousness. And I begin to ask myself, who am I? Am I this gross body huh, and this stupid mind that keeps making so many mistakes? <laughs> or am I something higher? Huh? Am I the sea, the seer? Or the seeing. Uh, some people will say, I am all of that. But actually, no. That is, if you think like that, you will stay on the Vivartavada platform because we see the world, right? From Ula Dunarpada. Because we see the world, that means we make a distinction between self and other, I and God, and all of this. It's a duality. Still, it's very spiritual, very nice, but it's still duality. So what comes next is that one gradually leaves off the senses, the body and the mind, the thoughts, and simply concentrates on the light alone. Now, what is the light? That light is the reflection of Brahman in your purified mind. How do I know this? Here's a good one for you. If you can meditate and get into this state, instead of thinking uh, the light is something shining at you, think of the light as something that's emanating from you and reflecting off of something. Huh? And it'll help if you visualize like uh, a wet street at night or a lake uh, reflecting the moonlight or, um, you know, some kind of shiny surface. Refle if you simply visualize or conceive of uh, reflecting surface, you will see that the inner light will get brighter. Okay? It'll get brighter. It'll say, yes, yes, I'm a reflection. Yes. <laughs> Because Brahman wants you to be enlightened. He's reaching toward you. He's just as hard or maybe harder than you're reaching towards him. So, okay. Once you get established in this light and you realize, okay, so far I've been through my gross body, my subtle body, my energy body, my mental body, my this body, my that, all the way to the point where now I am light. And I'm seeing my light reflected, right? But there is still a kind of duality there. Th this state, by the way, is called tatashta. Tatashta means in between, in the cracks, <laughs> in the middle, in the boundary line. So at the boundary, in between duality and non-duality, there's a kind of a, a weird gray area where Lord Shiva resides. And this is known as Tatashta. So when you're in Tatashta, <laughs> okay, what does the, the, the consciousness that you have 
is consciousness of yourself as consciousness. Awareness of awareness as a reflection in the purified mind. So when, when this reflection, when, when you bring this reflection out completely, fully realize it, you know, drop all the mind stuff that's blocking it and just let that settle, you know, and you're fully aware of yourself as consciousness, uh, as awareness of awareness alone. then since that never changes, is there really any need to be aware of it at all? The Buddha posed this question. If you are aware of being aware, if you ask anybody, do you exist? Huh? Are you real? Of course they're going to say, yes, of course I exist. Well, what's the proof? How do you know? What's the epistemological derivation of this knowledge? How do you know that you exist? And of course, people will hem and haw and this and that, but it always comes down to, I'm aware that I'm aware. I'm conscious that I'm conscious. Huh? Because even if somebody says, well, uh, here's, see, this is my body, here I am, right? Then you say, well, how do you know you do that, that body? What's your connection with that body? Well, I'm aware of that body. I control that body. This is my body, right? So this is still duality, whether it's about your body or about your consciousness, because... It's divided into subject and object. Even though the object is actually the subject simply reflected, which makes it tatashta, huh? it's not exactly duality, <laughs> but it's not exactly non-duality either. <laughs> this place, this, this stage is really out to lunch, right? So you have to see that before you could even be aware of yourself or anything else. First, you have to be. You have to exist a priori to being conscious. Before you can be conscious, you have to be, period. So, there is a state beyond even tatashta beyond awareness of awareness, and that is Turiya. So the way you get into it is, you go into ordinary meditation, you find the light, you follow the light back to the source, you see yourself as the source of the light, reflected in your mind, then you transcend that by dropping even the need to perceive it, and go into the state of just being. And this is the silence. Uh, my dear friend Satchirananda Maharaj compares it to being in the womb. I would agree with him, except I'd say it's like being in the womb with the lights on. <laughs> it's like being in the womb, it's like being asleep but being awake. So, I've gone over time, and I'm, I'm going to end this now. But, my God, you must have some questions. <laughs> this stuff is so far out. Huh? Maybe that's the problem. It's so far out that you can't even think of any questions. <laughs> what to do? Om Tatsat. Om Harihi Om.